Thank you so much for having us. We are thrilled to be here to be talking to you about the General Motors and Pinterest relationship. But before we begin, I have a very important question for Aaron. What did you hear, Yanni or Laurel? Well, the last time that I was asked that question and, and posed that, that audio clip, I heard Laurel. Okay. But I need to know, like, was that the right answer? I mean, for me, that's the right answer. That's what I heard. I heard Laurel. I'm convinced that that's the only answer. I went home, though, and asked my fiance what he heard, and it blew my mind. He heard Yanni. I was convinced that we were incompatible. <laughs> this is one month before our wedding, mind you, so <laughs> we have a lot to discuss now. So we agree, then. It's Laurel. Yes, yeah, so, but you and I, we're very compatible. Okay. Right. Um, well, on to a slightly less controversial topic, which is the GM and Pinterest relationship. So this relationship really started with one goal in mind, which is to help GM reach a consumer who is actively considering what to do or buy next. Now, this relationship has spanned across multiple brands at GM, but it really started with Chevy. So in this example, you can see that somebody is searching for family cars on Pinterest. And as they scroll, they come across a beautiful promoted video from Chevy Traverse promoting the quality and comfort of its interiors. And because this person is in active consideration mode, they actually save this ad onto their car hunting board, creating a shopping list, if you will, so that when it does come ready, when they are ready to buy that car, they know exactly what they want. Now, like I said, this relationship has now spanned across multiple brands at GM, including GMC, Buick, OnStar, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't always been that way. And that's actually why Jenny and I are on stage today, to share with you a little bit about that journey and how we got to where we are today. That's right, Aaron. So it really started with our company's shared vision and specifically the role that brands play on the Pinterest platform. So at Pinterest, our mission is to help people discover and do what they love. And that means connecting them to the most relevant, helpful, and actionable pieces of content. So that when they do find that thing that they love, they can actually put down their phone and go do that thing in real life. We actually talk a lot about not just time spent on our platform, but time well spent. And all of that can only be achieved with the help of brands. Brands really are at the center of that experience. In that SUV example that I showed, that experience can only be completed with the help of the GM content, which brings us to GM. So its mission is to help move humanity forward. Now, you can take that literally, which means cars physically moving people forward, but they have a much grander interpretation of that mission which is to educate and connect consumers with the greatest technology out there, with autonomous vehicles, Wi-Fi connectivity in their cars, safer vision driver safety, all the things that our pinners are looking for when they're looking to make that car purchase in their life. So that's probably easy for Pinterest, right? Um, Pinterest is a platform that was built for just that purpose, and people are flocking to the platform to plan out those life, life's biggest decisions, right? So these people are planning their weddings, they're planning gigantic and complicated vacations, they're planning home purchases and baby showers and wedding showers, landscapes, home remodels, all these different things, including big purchase things that are coming up on the horizon. And it's that one that really piques our interest on, on Pinterest because it's that active audience, that researching audience, that can be so tough to find. And that actually brings us to challenge number one and why we're here. And that's finding the people. So this is a story after all, and stories have a plot, and plots involve some sort of you know, struggle or, or challenge. And to understand ours, we've gotta travel back for a minute in time and, and figure out kind of where we came from. And what you would have is in the good old days, it was mostly about mass reach, right? You cast a very broad net across the, the public and you're somewhere within those millions of impressions, you're hoping to reach some minuscule percentage of people who are actually open to your message, want to hear from you, and potentially maybe interested in your product. 
So what that leads to is back then, using air quotes, um, you had the ad execs and their, their partners would be sitting in their large conference rooms and probably with walnut up on the walls. And they're discussing you know, what is the best mass reach mechanism available for whatever the specifics are of their issues. So in this example, you're probably thinking you know, 1950s, 60s era marketing, right? The Don Draper days of advertising. But if you check that for just a moment, you realize it really wasn't that long ago. And so you have to understand that to realize sort of how far we've come and where we are today. So today, when you're in 2018, you know, the walnut walls have probably been replaced with some sort of postmodern or synthetic looking wood materials, right? That's glued to everything. Um, but times have changed beyond just that as well. Um, mass reach is still at play. Nobody's here to say differently than that, but you're probably spending a lot of your time discussing your audiences, who they are, and exactly like how do you actually reach those people. So when we're talking about that reach, I'd imagine like, like us and General Motors and I prospect, you've probably, you've collected just tons of data. You've pulled that data, you've sliced that data, you've pivoted it, you've analyzed it, you've re-pulled it, you've re-sliced it, you've done this a million times. Hopefully, by now, you have a pretty good idea who that audience is, who you're trying to reach. Hopefully, you probably even know what type of message they're expecting from you and what they want to hear from you. But as big of an accomplishment as that is, you're still left with that, that other half of the equation is now you've got to go out and find them. We already know that they're segmented, they're in little pockets here and there. You've got to go on out now and try and actually figure out where they are and reach them. Um, which actually brings me to the Pinterest example that Jenny served up a, just a few minutes ago, the, the Chevy ad, where that person, if you notice, that was an unbranded search query. That was somebody who had decided that they were interested in an SUV, but they had not decided what kind of SUV it was. And that was that shopper that we so much wanted it to get into touch with. That person who's actively shopping, but hasn't made up their mind, and that we can get in that consideration set before she's made up her mind. And that type of active consideration without having fully made up their mind is happening across all of life's moments on Pinterest. Not only are people searching for cars, but they are nine times more likely to have a baby in the next six months. They're three times more likely to buy a home and they're 2.2 times more likely to get married. All of these created the perfect in-market segment opportunities for GM to reach its consumer. To further validate this, that the Pinterest audience, though, was specifically looking for a GM car, we went a step further. We partnered with a third-party audience provider, Polk, and we took their data and we mapped it against our audience. And the results were astonishing. We looked across all of GM's priority segments, and we saw that every segment over-indexed on Pinterest for likely to purchase. Now, there are some things that were not as surprising, like full-size and luxury SUVs, but there are some surprising nuggets in there, like pickup trucks, where pinners were also more likely to purchase just by being on Pinterest. So we've talked about the need for you know, us to reach these audiences. You have the audience, so we have a need, you have something to provide us. So we feel like we, we're feeling pretty good about solving that initial problem, right? Where we're trying to reach these in-market, these active, you know, purchase mindseted people, you know. So you think that the solve's there, but we're not quite to the happy ending just yet. And that's where challenge number two comes into the way our relationship actually unfolded here. And that's the legal hurdle. So. General Motors is a big company. That big company also has a very large legal department. And they actually had a fundamental issue with the, the way Pinterest is built and used. The fact that a user is on the platform and they find a piece of content that they like, they click the little save button, goes down to whatever board it is that they're interested in, they save that, they hold on to that. And it could last forever until that's no longer relevant to that person. That poses an issue for GM. You see, so many pieces of our creative talk about a limited time offer. It might talk about miles per gallon. It might talk about safety features. 
All of those things have limited shelf lives. And so it became a, a problem for General Motors where that content would live out there, able to get access from the general public, and it wasn't under their control. So what do you do about that, right? General Motors Legal has an issue with the fundamental way that Pinterest is built. That's an unsolvable problem, isn't it? Or at least it seems like it. No, actually, in this case, it wasn't. Um, in solving that issue, by the way, checkbox and a cat meme. Um, in this case, we were able to solve it, first of all, by aligning with the Detroit Pinterest account team. Um, they're in Detroit. They have an inherent understanding of automotive, more specifically General Motors for certain. But they also took a lot of time to really understand sort of the, the deep-rooted challenge we were facing and sort of empathize with kind of what we were challenged with. And through that understanding, they were able to lobby their, their product team, engineering team, I'm not even sure what team it was, but <laughs> obviously decision makers, you'll, you'll notice after you hear about the results, um, they lobbied for them to at least just consider alternatives. And out of that, we actually did get directly connected with a, a team of these decision makers, a conference call directly, my, me and my team representing General Motors. We explained the challenge the issues, the things we were looking for. We even were nice enough to give them ideas on how they could change their platform to solve our needs. Now, Very much appreciated, by the way. We have a long laundry list of things. To partnership, now. <laughs> give and take. Now, in that instance, they didn't take, but that's not where that conversation ended. Um, they actually debated on their side of the line the merits of, of what we were trying to get to. And what was interesting about this is no mute buttons. We hear an entire group of people debating pros and cons, and we should and shouldn't do that, and this is what it should be working like, back and forth. And they countered some of our ideas and proposals. Didn't quite work. It didn't completely solve the issues, but we were able to come back with some more ideas. And after about an hour or so on this conference line of going back and forth, we actually did get to a place where we had a workable solution. And out of that conversation, came a relatively new pin type, the, the removable pins. So removable pins don't have the little red save button on them. So you can still put your message out into the marketplace, talking about whatever you want to talk about, MPGs all day long. But when that's no longer rele relevant, or it's no longer valid or expires, we end the campaign and those pins are removed from the platform therefore solving that issue, which was amazing. Yeah, what we really realized that GM helped us to see is that not all content needs to be saved and last forever. Um, and it would be a disservice to our pinners if we were actually putting messages out there that were outdated. So if somebody were to come back a month, a year, two, three years later, that they weren't discovering outdated content anymore. And that would have been a more disappointing experience. Um, so we were extremely grateful for that leaning in type of partnership, which is how we like to work with General Motors and iProspect. Um, I wish I could say that that is the solution in every challenge that we face is coming up with a new product to overcome a legal hurdle. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but it did work out in this scenario because of really where I started with, which is the shared vision of our two companies and the role that brands play on our platform. Um, we recognize that as pinners are looking to find cars and specifically make purchase decisions for them and their families, that again, that's only a really fulfilling and actual experience if we had GM content on our platform. So I'm so grateful that we were able to make that work. We've been able to now scale our partnership to several brands that are listed on here. Um, and I really wanted to thank Aaron and the leadership team at iProspect for really leaning in and recognizing the potential of our audience, of people who are actively considering what to do and buy next, and also pushing us on seizing the white space so that we can come up with new, innovative product solutions. And we appreciate the partnership as well and the value that you've brought for General Motors. Great. Thank well, thank you so much for listening to our story. Um, I'll be asking you guys later, what did you hear, Yanni and Laurel? But in the meantime, thank you again. We've been so excited to share the GM Pinterest partnership. Thank you.